fake it till you make it. If there's one thing I wish I'd known earlier, the power of lying in your resume would be it. I want to tell you guys a story. In 1496, Florence, Italy, there was a struggling young artist. Despite his talent and passion, he was dead broke. He lived in the time of the early Renaissance where there was a sudden revived interest in classical art. He observed that art collectors and dealers valued antique sculptures over contemporary artworks. So to gain recognition, he devised a clever plan. He sculpted the image of a sleeping Cupid, artificially aged it by burying it in a vineyard, and sold it as an antique to the Italian cardinal Raphael Riario. Although he was eventually caught and reprimanded for fraud, the church fell in love with his artwork and commissioned him to make more, thus launching him to fame. That cheeky motherfucker was Michelangelo. The moral of the story is, fake it till you make it. If there's one thing I wish I'd known earlier, the power of lying in your resume would be it. Shout out to Rollo Vies for the question, by the way. I'm a full-time graphic designer, illustrator, and freelance photo videographer. And in this video, I'm gonna help you land your first graphic design job. I don't care if you got zero experience, no portfolio, no brain cell. If you watch this video and follow it to a T, you're gonna land yourself your first job. I know some people think it's wrong to lie, but I disagree. In this economy, you need to pull out all the stops. Any edge you can get, use it. As long as you're smart about it, lying on your resume might be the boost you need to jumpstart your career. The first thing I wanna talk about is the importance of art school, or more accurately, the unimportance. To put it bluntly, you don't need to go. I've been to art school, and it's a waste of time. It's like kindergarten for 20 year olds. The only pros of attending is if you have a fetish for malnourished alt boys or women with hairy armpits. <laughs> when it comes to graphic design specifically, you don't need to take formal education. Everything you need is available on YouTube. Download a pirated copy of Photoshop, learn how to mask, clone stamp, and resize. That's all you need to know. Those three things will carry you across any junior graphic design job out there. Don't take a loan out just to pay someone to give you an assignment, just for you to look up a YouTube tutorial anyway. Cut the middleman out and don't go to art school. But what if the job description asks for a bachelor's degree? Then just lie. Pick a random local art school in your area and just say you went. What are they gonna do? They're gonna call and double check? They might do that for doctors and lawyers, but they're not gonna waste their time on a junior graphic designer. It's a waste of a company's time. I didn't even major in graphic design. I never studied it. I learned how to use Photoshop by bullying other kids in high school and editing them into memes. My major was animation, and I just changed that to whatever job I'm applying for. If they're asking for an illustrator, hey, I studied illustration. If they're looking for a photographer, I studied photography. I've never once been called out. So trust me, you'll be fine. So now that you have education under your belt, you might think you can start applying for entry-level graphic design jobs, but it's at this stage you'll run into the experience paradox. It's when you have no work experience, but every entry graphic design job asks for a minimum one or two years work experience just to be considered for the role. Now you can go through the process of trying to string together 10 different internships just to hit the minimum requirements, or you can just fake it. But here's the trick, don't outright lie. Just embellish the truth. If you had a two week internship, say you did two months. If you had a two month internship, say it was six. And if you had no experience, just say you did some freelance work for a bunch of cafes and Chinese restaurants. Cafes because they have high turnover rates and they tend to go bankrupt really quickly. So you can just choose a local cafe that doesn't exist anymore. That way if they do call to try to confirm if you work there, there's no one to answer. And Chinese restaurants because if they do call and someone picks up, they can't even understand them. Now the next thing you're gonna need is a solid portfolio. This is the single most important part of your application and can make or break your chances of landing an interview. And the fact that you're watching this video, I'm gonna assume you don't have a portfolio ready, but don't worry, I've got a plan for that too. Go to pinterest.com and type in minimalist graphic design portfolio. Now you specifically want a minimalist one because it's the easiest to replicate. I mean, it's minimalist. It takes minimal skill required. Choose one you like, copy the layout style, but tweak it a little bit, you know, flip it, change the colors, choose a slightly different font. And what you want to include in your portfolio is about four to six pieces of your best work. Too little and it shows your inexperience, but too much and it's annoying because it's too long and they have to sift through like 50 plus applicants. 
And if you don't have any work to include, some really easy portfolio pieces to fake include cafe menus, websites, product photography, and minimalist illustration. Remember to save your portfolio as a PDF file under 15 megabytes. Make it as easy to download as possible. Don't send them a 200 megabyte file that'll take ages to open up. You're almost there. You have your resume and a portfolio. Now you're ready to start applying for jobs and landing an interview. But where do you find listings? This one's a bit hard to give specific advice on because it's dependent on your location. But I personally tend to avoid generic websites like Indeed or Monster.com because they're generic websites and only generic companies will post listings on there. But if the idea of designing presentations for insurance companies excites you, then go for it. But there's a really great portal for Australians called The Loop. It's a dedicated website where creative studios will put their listings. These are more of the fun kind of design gigs. I've been able to find work in fashion, agencies, and TV animation through the site. Every country would have their own version of this website. So just ask around or troll through some Reddit threads. I also have to throw in LinkedIn as well. I hate LinkedIn and the toxic Oh, I wake up at 3am and take cold showers hustle mindset that it promotes. But LinkedIn is pretty good actually. They have this great feature where you can apply for jobs in just one click, which makes applying for hundreds of jobs in a day super convenient. But my favorite tip would be to directly contact companies you're interested in working for. I read somewhere that only 20% of job vacancies are ever advertised. If you stick to just job recruitment websites, you're missing out on 80% of available jobs out there. So my advice is to go to the website, find their contact page, and either through email or through calling, try to cold message them. But don't come off as too desperate. Don't trauma dump on them. You wanna keep it short, keep it upbeat. Maybe something along the lines of, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. I found your email on your website and I wanted to reach out because I'm a really big fan of your work. I'm a young designer looking to share my talents with a team that I can grow with. And I was wondering if you had any available opportunities for a junior graphic designer. Here's a link to my portfolio. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, your name. If you feel weird about it, don't be. You have nothing to lose. The absolute worst they'll do is they'll just ignore your email. But I can personally attest to this. I've done this a bunch of times and I've been able to land some good interviews. If you made it this far, congrats. You should be proud of how far you've come just purely off bullshitting. Now you must pass the final test, the interview. If a company likes your portfolio and your resume, they're gonna invite you in for a chat. You can rest assured that at this point, you pass the minimum requirements for skills and experience. So don't worry about that. What they're looking for in the interview is if you're a good cultural fit for the company. Basically, do they like you as a person? And if you're being invited for the interview, you're probably one of five people that they're considering for the role. Don't worry about trying to impress them with your design or trying to come off as really smart and educated, no. Treat the job interview the same way you would treat a first date. Because here's a secret. You don't actually need to be the most qualified person to win the role. People want to work with people they want to work with. It doesn't matter if the person they interviewed before you has elite level design skills and has worked with giant companies. If that person is smelly, annoying, or awkward, they would rather choose someone that has 50% of their talent, but is funny and cool and smells nice. So here are my unconventional tips for a job interview. One. Don't be autistic. Two, maintain eye contact, but not too much. You don't want to be, you know, you don't want to creep them out. You know, staring too long is just too intense. Use the 80-20 rule. 80% making eye contact and then breaking away 20% of the time. Three, when you go in for the handshake, make sure your hands are warm. Rub them up real good. It's a terrible first impression walking in with some cold, clammy hands. It's like shaking hands with a corpse. Four. Make a few jokes and don't be afraid to try to troll them a little bit. Bust their balls like they're an old friend. In the recruitment phase, they're so used to people trying to suck up to them. So doing this establishes a false sense of authenticity and familiarity. I once teased the guy for looking like Timothy Chalamet at a job interview. I straight up flirted with him. Borderline made him uncomfortable, but he blushed. I think I reckon he kind of liked it and I was offered the role. Five. There comes a point in the interview where the interviewer is gonna to try to flip the roles and they're gonna ask you, do you have any questions for us? Hit them with the, if I were to get the role, what would my first two weeks look like? This is a masterclass response because A, it displays confidence and B, you get a preview on how to plan your first two weeks there because you've been faking it at this point and C, now they're envisioning you as a successful candidate. It's like the movie Inception. You're planting the seed in their mind. 
And lastly, six, if your job interview is through Zoom, make sure you're looking directly into the camera. We all wanna look at the screen, check out ourselves, look at the person at the other end of the call. But when you do this, it actually looks like you're looking down and away. You have to train yourself to look up and talk directly into the camera. So if you followed all my steps correctly, you should have been offered a job. Congrats. A typical day of a graphic designer is, is actually really easy. You don't do much of the concept development or the branding or any big decision making. That's the job of the senior designer. You'll mostly be doing grunt work. So cleaning up product photography, whitening people's teeth, really mindless stuff. Like you can just chuck on a podcast and just hammer it out. But occasionally you won't. Eventually you're gonna be asked to do something that's a little bit outside of your skill level and you'll feel something that's called imposter syndrome, which is this looming anxiety because you feel like a fraud and that you're one mistake away from losing your job completely. It's a horrible thing to experience. And to be honest, you kind of deserve it. I mean, you did lie in your resume, but I have some advice on how to deal with that. The first thing you should know is that if you can survive just the first two weeks of a job, you're pretty much in the clear. With every day that goes by, a company is investing thousands of dollars into your development. The longer you can fool them, the more that the company is reliant on you. And very quickly, all the other unsuccessful applicants, they'll have probably moved on to different jobs, which means if they were to fire you, they would have to start the entire recruitment phase all over again. Financially, they're in a fucked position. Now it's more profitable to just train you from scratch. The second thing you should know is that it's actually kind of a good thing that you're underqualified. Every company knows that job loyalty is a thing of the past. Doesn't matter which industry, turnover is high. Companies worry every day about losing their best talent to a higher salary somewhere else. So you being incompetent is kind of a good thing for them. And you're just happy you landed a job. You're not going anywhere. So it's actually a win-win situation for everyone. And thirdly, if you ever get asked to do something you have no idea what to do, just remember two phrases. Oh, Adobe must have updated that recently. And, oh, we did it differently in my old job. But can you show me how to do it once and I'll be able to do it again? They'll either teach you how to do things or you can run to the bathroom and just Google how to do it. You're getting paid to learn. It's a pretty sweet deal. I also want to give you guys a cheat sheet of resources and websites that'll help you as a designer. For typography, the font, 1001 fonts, Google fonts, Pexels and Unsplash for free stock imagery, FreePick for illustrations, Canva for design templates, free AI art generators such as Night Cafe and Hot Pot to help you come up with ideas or generate illustration, and Photopea for a free browser version of Photoshop. Last thing I wanna to touch on is the ethics behind everything I just talked about. Some of you will feel a bit slimy for faking your experience, but you shouldn't. If the late, great Michelangelo can do it, then so can you. Think of this whole finesse as a demonstration to show what you're potentially capable of doing. Besides, graphic design is an occupation it's gonna be dead within five years time. AI is gonna replace every designer out there. So enjoy the last few remaining years of making some easy money. Thanks for watching and good luck. Hey, you're still here. Um, yeah, chuck a like, chuck a subscribe, uh, do all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, sorry this video took a long time. I've been, I've been taking a lot of freelance work lately and yeah, I, just, I really don't have a lot of time to do YouTube, but I promise that I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell people no. But oh man, that money, man, it's hard to turn it down. <laughs> I recently had the opportunity to shoot at a pretty big size festival. It was really fun. I got to check out some great local bands as well as some pretty big international artists. Got access to VIP areas and was able to skip the line to go straight to the front. And I bring that up because in the same way that I faked it till I made it with graphic design, I'm currently doing the same thing with photo videography. I mean, I've only had a camera for about one year and I'm already doing like, you know, bigger projects. Now I was being a little bit tongue in cheek in this video, but it comes from a real place. Like I genuinely believe that if you put yourself out there 99% of the time, you'll surprise yourself with how good you really are. Either that or I'm just ridiculously talented. Anyway, I just wanted to share that because um, I want to try to upload weekly. Hopefully I can stick to my guns and I can start curbing that freelance work and dedicate more time to YouTube because you know, this is really rewarding for me. Like I really enjoy this. I think about it all the time. If you guys had a video idea or a topic or something you want me to address, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments and I'll give it a shot. All right, peace.